Hi, everyone, and welcome to the afternoon session at AI Village. Um, I am pleased to introduce Kenya Yoshimura and Takahiro Yoshimura on Clairvoyance Concurrent Lip Reading for the Smart Masses. Thank you, everybody. Please give them a huge round of applause. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Today, we are talking about our research on automated lip reading. If you have any questions, please mention us in Twitter or something like anytime. Thank you. My name is Takahiro. I'm a security researcher. Hi, my name is Kenya. I'm a researcher too. Um, we are not native English speakers. Let us apologize for our English is no good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Firstly, let us introduce ourselves. We are a small security firm located in Saitama, Japan. Do you know Saitama? Saitama is rather peaceful district, lying north of Tokyo. Um, as you see, it has great nature. Uh, we live in some urban area near Tokyo, so. <clears throat> um, up there, uh, we, do uh, we do various security related works from vulnerability assessments, pen testings, code audits, forensics analysis, analysis and some good research. We play CTFs too. Uh, we also give talks in, in conferences. So why is lip reading? Lip reading is a technique. Reading speaker's lip to extract what he or she is saying. Commonly used among uh, hearing impaired people. Let's see the action. Oh. What? Just a moment. Oh. Okay. Yes. You hear no audio. But um, we mark lips. Uh, we mark the area with lips. And lip reading works like this. Uh, in lip reading, uh, people say uh, lips and extract what he was say saying. So let us show the another example. Um, it is not an easy task. Um, not only it takes quite a long time to master it, but also even professional human lip readers often misread. Um, automated lip reading is somewhat a hot area of research these days. As we know, uh, we have LipNet, uh, which has been written by Oxford University et al. published three years ago. So what is LipNet? LipNet is an awesome lip reading neural network. Research ha researchers have shown uh, it can read words of the lips of English speakers in more than 90% accuracy of a person. Like human, hip re uh, like human lip readers, uh, LipNet works by looking for the movements of the lips. More specifically, it extracts the images of mouses um, out of the input frames. For extraction, it uses a DRE-based face detector and predictor. Here, the, here are examples of uh, extracted mouse images. Uh, um, did you know something? Um, why are they being curled? Um, because LipNet 
tend to overheat on grayscale images since it has rather simple CNNs in the former stage. Uh, well, let's see it in action. The grid. Grid is a large multi-talker audio visual sentence compass, compass to support joint computational behavior studies in speech perception. It consists of high quality uh, audio and facial rec recordings of 1,000 sentences spoken by each of 34 speakers. You can check it as a landmark of corpus for speech recognition in controlled environments. Now, let's see how well Repeat works. Ah, um, we will be using pre-trained LeapNet in our two clairvoyance. <laughs> As you see, our frame is dis displayed and the commission is running. I'll see, um, lay, blue, buy, I, nine, please, um, not so bad. In contrast, pressure on human lip readers mark about 50, or a sub score in average. Uh, so far so good. Um, then let it spin on some real world recordings. This is a recording. So, um, I'm sorry, uh, it, but it's a bit hard to see why it's Red. But uh, no, he shouldn't be talking such a nonsense. It is so grid like sentence. What happened? Um, it might be overfit. Maybe. Um, vocabulary might be limited. Maybe. Mm. Anyways, in real world, people talk in very more variety than controlled environments. Feeding lips, lipnet gives us fat sentences because of it, uh, it, re it requires extensive retraining on updating vocabulary. For easy update of vocabulary, we think it is better to decouple sentence generation by giving forms instead of sentences. Actually, V2P, a uh, more modern lip reading model, produces forms. Um, so let's say the cost of grid uh, remains upon us until we undergo the full retain <coughs> retain of it uh, using something more fun. Um, now we almost heard, hear you say why are you using such an answer, Zem? Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's why uh, we could not have compasses handy. Um, as you see, uh, LRW1 and 2 and the lip reading into wild compasses uh, have non commercial only policy um, enforced by BBC and introducing a long turnaround time. Because we are not students, nor in a um, research institution, we couldn't use them. For LRS3, the lip reading in the sentences compass uh, has very different format for 
alignments. Alignments are precise transcriptions. For example, when RS3 used seconds for the time point, that um, and it does not use the C or SP notations. For this reason, we are forced to convert the format to an um, expected by the LibNet implementation we use. On top of that, it contains far, far longer clips than grid. And we must arrange input format for that. During uh, doing something like this, uh, our time has run out. So please forgive us for using pre-trained LibNet for the rest of our session. Um, of course, um, we don't stop there. We are to decouple lip reading models out of our tool. Well, enough for excuse. Um, let's get back to the topic. Um, so we want our tool clairvoyances um, to deal with security cameras. How well does it do? Uh, as you know, security camera streams present full challenges. Uh, people tend to look down, lower quality of image, lower frame rate, and tremendous murmuring. Um, lower quality. This is mostly because they are small devices, so optics are limited, and they are designed to record for a long time. Hmm. Next. People seem to, people seem like look down. This is because they are often mounted somewhere hard to reach out, too often somewhere high or looking down. Um, lastly, um, people look murmuring all the time. This is because of angle of camera, often they are mounted looking down people. Two years ago, uh, Ross Grants applied lip reading to security cameras in Dutch language, and he succeeded to detect aggressions. In his research, an Uras-based model is used for detecting certain words such as curses or streets. R2, uh, R2, Clevers use this uh, leaflet anyways. How well does it do? Um, okay, let's see. Um. Security camera recordings. You see a red rectangle, and the rectangle shows uh, my clear balance is reading that area. So, see. It had no problem to detect the faces and read the lips in spite of the challenges we have described. Hmm. <clears throat> Hi. Um, so far, so good. But wait. Um, then, what is the point of our research? Um, it is concurrency. Honestly, uh, we have not seen a single research of applying a model to the concurrent lip reading of a multiple person. Um, this is what we did today. And we stand here to show you how we read multiple person in concurrent manner. Um, on top of that, we are going to identify speakers so that we can track threads of conversations in a set. <laughs> So, in order to read, in order to read the lips, 
we must detect where they stand. That is the face. We used the uh, we use a uh, daily based face detection to detect them. As you know, DLIB is quite vast image process library powered by machine learning techniques. We once thought to utilize something more orthodox, say using banyas in OpenCV. But it doesn't but it doesn't go well. Detectors based on based detectors based on OpenCV uh, tend to be picky over object alignment. Um, dropping person not standing upward was something like that. On the other hand, once based on daily, handle cases like this just fine, or uh, more robust at least. As you know, daily does hog based detection by default, but it can utilize CNN for more precise detection. Clearance can use it too, but it comes with significantly higher cost, about 15 times of that of hog based detection. Um, after detecting faces, uh, we keep their features for their identities. Um, for facial recognition processes, uh, process, we use the face recognition library. With it, we can flash facial features into 128 dimensional vectors called encodings. Um, we recognize faces by keeping their encodings and finding distances among them. Um, but um, fortunately, um, our recognition process is not quite stable. That is a problem we call rank swaps um, more specific specifically. Um, the facial tag can jump around, but why do they do? Um, we have identified three root ca causes. Um, the first one is because facial encodings are brittle. By saying brittle, we mean we cannot get the same encoding for the same face in the same pose. The next one is uh, because facial detection, facial detection order is not stable. By saying not stable means we cannot predict the order of faces reported. Um, and the last one. Um, it's because uh, uh, resembling threshold. The distance with the face recognition library considers resembling enough. It's set at 0 0.6, um, quite a high number, but is this number really high? Um, let us show some pictures. Um, Trump and Hillary, um, both showing um, 0 0.3 issues. They both have distances of 0.3 inches. Can you believe it? Hmm? Oh, okay. Fiction ranks are not easy, um, but we believe it is safe to assume faces are not support to make sudden and large, uh, large waps. We need a few experiments, so. Um, after recognizing faces, we detect their lips. To detect lips, we use 68 points face, face predictor comes with d -lib, taking points after 48. After detecting lips, then we research uh, then we research them as we need. Since our model expects them in 100 by 50, so we target that size. For better recognition, we also attempt to upsampling them if they are small. For upsampling them, we could utilize some super resolution imaging techniques. As far as 
are techniques that intend to recreate details. But is SR, but is SR really helpful? SRs are quite expensive. So we did some experiments to weigh their costs. Let us show some pictures. The center one and the right one are both resized instances of the left one. The center is done with SR, and the right is done with the nearest neighbor method. Can you spot the difference? We could not. So we concluded that SRs are not worth of the cost for our use cases. So we dropped the idea. Um, and to compensate lower frame rate, we considered interpolating frames before feeding to our model. But as far as we know, um, modern security cameras tend to generate enough frame rate just fine. Um, so in SIG, uh, interpolating frames would be superficial Sounds we dropped the idea either. Mm -hmm. um, after our lips got resized, we sent them to reading process by batch by batch, face by face, for concurrency readings. Uh, reading process. Reading process is tasks to feed our model continuously and output the reading with the name and some timestamp. Reading process is driven by coroutines, so reading occurs in fifth order. Um, well, enough talking. Let's see how it goes. Hmm. We are reading four person in parallel. Um. See, uh, we have succeeded to read four people in four ways of talking. Um, uh, as a bonus, well, we really serve to cleverness as free software, as free in freedom. Um, please, feel free, <laughs> please feel free to experiment with it. Hopefully, send us two requests. Uh, please mention us, please mention us in Twitter or something for questions. We will reply later. Okay. Oh, well, that is all for today. Thank you for listening to us. So.